I'm Claire and in today's video we're going to do something that makes me feel just a teensy bit uncomfortable um, but it is my birthday tomorrow and that's what makes me feel uncomfortable I'm not great with birthdays um, but I'm working really hard on being better at just celebrating things about me um, I think it's a very common trait for dancers because we're very work 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 and always you know doing the next thing and we just don't stop and go yay we're always looking for the next win so as you can see by the title obviously you've clicked on it this is 37 dance facts about me because uh, a lot of you have been watching fairly consistently for the five months I've been doing this so far and um, yeah it'd be nice to be know a little bit more about me but in a dance context okay first one how old were you when you started dancing? I was six, I started dancing in 1987. Yes, I am that old. At two, what dance schools did you go to? I went to Class 6 School of Dance in Sunbury, was my first school. Then I went to Essendon Academy of Ballet with Athel Willoughby. And then I went to Michelle Slater School of Dance, or Michelle Slater Performing Arts as it's called now. Uh, my first comp solo was a classical, and I wore a pink tutu. Oh, how cliche. Definitely a toss-up between two. My demi-character that I learnt from Michelle Bush at Classique, I did a character called Naughty Mademoiselle, about a little French girl who um, finds a book on the can-can and teaches herself to do the can-can. It was heaps of fun. And a jazz that I did with Michelle Slater to Sammy Davis Jr.'s version of Birth of the Blues. I loved it. Love, love, love. <sighs> That's really, really tough. Um, and I've learnt so much from so many teachers in my life and I've had some really bad teachers as well. Um, but most, I've been pretty lucky for the most part. Um, I think the one that was my favourite and I looked up to the most and had a biggest impact on me, so all of those things combined, would be Anne Butler. She taught for Mr Willoughby at Essendon Academy of Ballet. She taught mostly contemporary and it was always a you know an honour to be invited to be in her contemporary ballet, and that was my first introduction. First introduction. Bleh. That was my introduction to contemporary, um, and I will always, always be grateful to her for that. What is your favourite style to dance? Oh, I don't think I don't really have a specific style to dance. I did throughout my dance training, but. I really just love anything where I get to just completely immerse myself in a character and put my personal stuff aside and just blah, be into it. So um, contemporary, um, demi-character of course, musical theatre, anything where I really, really get to get into a meaty character. My favourite style to watch. This is a very important question for me because I am an adjudicator and it's basically it's my job, job, excuse me, it's my job to watch dancing. So. But, oh, I don't know, I can't go past a really, really powerful contemporary piece. Alvin Ailey's Revelations, the whole thing, just, oh, it's amazing. Every time I just, I'm captivated. Cinnamon in particular. Um, yeah, chills, 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 chills. Who is your favourite dancer? Okay, so a lot of the questions on this list I found really hard to narrow it down to one. This one I did not. Mikhail Baryshnikov, hands down, obsessed. Um, I used to have fit pictures in my locker of Brad Pitt. I'm wearing on my t-shirt. Brad Pitt and Mikhail Brzezikov and the pyramids. I'm a strange person. That's what I had in my locker when I was a teenager. I'm obsessed with him. I got to see him dance live once. Um, he came to Melbourne and did the White Oak, with the White Oak Dance Project and I was so overwhelmed that I started crying before the curtain opened, before the curtain went up and I was just couldn't contain myself. And he was amazing. I wasn't going to put, do this question because it's not a fair question because I just, this, but I can't choose one, I can't, so I won't choose one. Uh, I love Bob Fosse, of course. Um, Pina Bausch is, from a contemporary point of view, Pina Bausch is just a freaking genius. If you don't know Pina Bausch and you consider yourself a contemporary dancer, shame on you, go look her up. She's incredible, the stuff she's done. Uh, and there's a doco, I think it's on Netflix. But yeah, there's a doco, Peanut, and it's beautiful. Um, and I also, a bit more local, I love the work that Raphael Bonicello is doing with the Sydney Dance Company. I think he's doing some incredibly powerful things. Um, yeah, so I suppose they're 
my favourites, but I'll think of more after, won't I? Mm. Okay, so my most embarrassing story um, is involves this picture, this tutu. It happened on the night when I was wearing this. Um, okay, so I was 16 in this photo. This tutu was on hire from the Australian Ballet Company, um, and anyone who had a solo or a lead in our ballet, at our ballet school, would get an Australian Ballet tutu. And I was so privileged, I was like, Ooh, I'm wearing the Australian Ballet tutu. Um, I was the bluebird in Snow White. The last person to wear this tutu before me, so whose name was written in it, was the incredible Lisa Bolte, who I just was, she was, oh, I loved her. I loved her so much. So I was just like floating on air. Um, but I also remember the day of the performance and the day before when we had the dress rehearsal, I just, I felt like crap. I was so nervous and I thought maybe it's because I'm wearing Lisa Bolte's tutu. It was my first time doing a solo in the concert on point. I'd done point before, but not solo. I didn't know what it was. I just felt crap. Um, yeah, so I was emotional, felt really sick. If you can't see where this is going, that was the night I got my first period on stage in a tutu, hired by the Australian Ballet, in front of probably around 500 people. Mm, mm, that was my most embarrassing story. Um, luckily, I it wasn't a heavy period, so I wasn't like gushing or anything. No one could see. Um, but oh my God, I was so angry. And I remember I changed really quickly out of that tutu into my contemporary costume. And I basically just picked up the tutu threw it at my mum's feet and my sister was standing with her and they already knew what had happened and all this stuff and I've gone I've gone to them and if either one of you two tell me give me any of that crap about becoming a woman I will smack you in the face and I just sort of stormed off and that's pretty much the tone that my periods took from then until now yeah I'm not fun to be around at all Okay, uh, funniest dance story. See previous. My favourite dance costume. I have another visual aid. Um, my mum, I was really lucky. My mum made a lot of my costumes and she was incredible at making costumes and had such high standards for her costumes. Anyway, I was about 17. I was doing a tap solo, which I'd never tap, done a tap solo before because tap was just not my thing. And I had to do a tap solo in this championship where you had to do a jazz solo, a contemporary solo, and a tap. And so my teacher, Michelle Slater, who's an amazing tap teacher, um, she did her best. She really did. Like, thank you, Michelle. We had a lot of laughs, but, you know. Um, and my mum said, well, if you're... You, you know, if you're going to try and tap, let's make you something spectacular and then hopefully the audience and the adjudicator will be distracted. Um, now, you're probably thinking, oh, that's a really nasty thing to say, but no, 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 I needed it. So this is what my mum made me. Um, it's my favourite colour. It's amazing. Look at it. That's all hand beaded. All hand beaded. It's velvet. It was this beautiful high cut. It's got these... It was st oh, breathtaking, absolutely amazing on stage, this costume. And it is quite heavy. heavy. Um, and it had a headpiece with the step sort of geometric thing as well to match. It's just amazing. Um, it did not, however, distract from the fact that um, I can't tap very well. I can teach it and I can judge it. Can't do it. Anyone who's learnt from me definitely will know this one. Don't fart. That is my best tip. So instead of thinking of tucking your bum under or putting your sit bones down or squeezing the bum muscle, the glute muscles, instead of thinking of anything like that, use the visualization of holding in a fart. Um, it's really good with younger students because they, they think it's funny, but it gives them a really, really easy to understand um, image, I suppose, for activating their deep intrinsic pelvic muscles um, and so they're not just squeezing on the outside it's a real you're all doing it now aren't you squeeze hold a fart you're activating the correct muscle. I've 
always loved canvas ballet shoes. We weren't allowed to wear them a lot. We had to wear leather for proper things, but I've always loved canvas ones. So when MDM bought out their range, I was just like, yes, please, yes, please. Um, I now love any of their shoes, really, like the leather ones, whatever, but definitely canvas, preferably MDM canvas. Favourite dancewear label, absolutely hands down Energetics. They're Australian owned um, and I actually worked for them. My first ever part-time job was with Energetics when I was 14. Um, they didn't even have their own label then, they were just a dance shop and um, I absolutely adore them. Um, they're, oh, and their leotard sizes actually fit my ridiculously long torso. Um, a lot of the other brands I love, but I can't wear them because I'm really long in the torso and I don't fit into any of their leotards and things like that. So, Energetics, thank you for having my back. <laughs> Favourite dance movies? But, well, I'm not picking one. It's not going to happen. I live by the three Fs. Fame, Flashdance, Footloose. Done. Um, I really love a senior level class. And as far as style goes, musical theatre and contemporary, probably. Um, but I also just, if it's a really technical group, um, I really love a technical open ballet class as well. I'm not doing a very good job of answering just one thing for each of these, but oh well. Favourite song to dance to? Ooh. Okay, if it's ballet and contemporary, it'd be Vivaldi or Gershwin, and pretty much anything else I'll find off the Fame or the Flash Dance, Fame, Flash Dance soundtracks, or anything by the Beatles. So not one song again. I can't. I can't just pick one. It's too hard. You try and do this. I'll put the. I'll. I'll put the list down below in the description. You guys try and do this and see if you can just come up with one for each of them. You can't. You can't. My biggest influence as a dancer. Um, so a lot of you won't know these people. It's not a famous person. This one. Um, but my parents were ballroom dancers, and I grew up in that dance world as a very little girl. And my mum's best friend, Deborah Woolley, she and her partner, Bernie, were um, Australian champions in Latin. They were amazing dancers. Um, and as a little girl, and I mean little, little girl, I hadn't even started dance classes yet, I wanted to grow up to be Deborah and Bernie. Um, very little, I thought I could grow up to be two people. Um, but yeah, it was just their dancing and the way they captivated the audience, just that's what I wanted. Favourite dance YouTuber? Um, definitely a toss up between KBM Talent, Krista Miller and Autumn Miller. Um, their channel is great, really good for anything like lyrical and jazz, that kind of style. And of course Claudia Dean, if, you're, if you've watched anything I've done before on YouTube, you know I'm obsessed with Claudia Dean, she's amazing, love her. Favourite team comp dance? Definitely Blackbird, the under 17 jazz with Michelle Slater. Um, we knew we were part of some, making something special when we started doing that. Um, favorite routine I've ever choreographed? I've had a lot of routines I'm very proud of, but definitely the one that I'm most proud of was an open age contemporary routine um, to this day that I did with my studio, Kappa. Um, <clears throat> I've actually seen a lot of people do this piece, like as in the song, the poems. Um, since then and that's great but I, I will say that I, I don't think I've done it before do I'm not saying people were copying me and I might have pulled this out but mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah it was a very special process the kids were very involved in putting together the piece there was a lot of workshopping and impro in getting that piece together they put their hearts and souls into it and um, yeah very proud of that piece and we did really well with it at conference it was just a bonus. Favourite full length ballet? When I was younger, I loved La Fille Magade because it was just so happy and whimsical and funny. Um, but then I saw Graham Murphy's Nutcracker and it just fused my love of theatrical drama, theatre, and ballet. It fused them together and I was just, and, and it had contemporary dance elements in it as well. It just blew my mind. It was amazing. I've seen it several times and it's wonderful. I, oh, so good. Love it. I grew up watching movie musicals. Other families, you know, watched action movies or comedies or whatever. We watched those, but our thing was musicals. So I, I love so many of them for many sentimental reasons, but I think my top three are Singing in the Rain, 
Yeah, Singing in the Rain, American in Paris, and oh, Cabaret. Liza, Bossy, bam. So good. So favorite musical I've seen on stage. Um, I saw Newsies on Broadway in 2012, and it was incredible. It was absolutely amazing. The energy that just, oh, it just jumped off the stage from the dancing of these the guys in this group. They were, it was incredible. It was so good. Loved it. Favorite performance as a professional is um, this one's easy. Um, definitely Curly Girl Burlesque, a show that I created. Um, it was. Yeah, it was really special. It was fun. Um, uh, yeah, we were a team of diverse, talented, and just weirdly flawed, eccentric, wonderful women. And it, every time we came on stage, it was like that stage was our. We totally owned it. Um, it was a very political show. It wasn't burlesque in the way that you. It was not burlesque in the way that Christina Aguilera movie did it. No, that's that, that's cabaret. That's not burlesque. Um, don't let me get into that right now. But yeah, it was just, it was political, it was irreverent, it was in your face, it was challenging. We ran for about two and a half years every weekend doing shows and it was just, I was so proud of myself but also of the girls and the whole group. It was just so much fun. Best experience I've ever had on stage. So the solo that I mentioned before that I was one of my favourites, Birth of the Blues, um, there was this time when I was doing that when I had been suffering really bad depression um, and still battled mental health issues and there was this one time where it, it had really affected my comp dancing. Um, I went from getting fairly consistent places to nothing, occasionally scraping by an honourable mention type thing and it was the depression really getting in the way. Um, and then, yeah, there was just this one comp when I don't know what triggered it, but I was standing in the wings, I was about to go on stage, and I remember thinking, like, all of these, the negative points of like, what's the point, I'm not gonna win, why bother, you're not good enough, you'll never make it as a dancer, all of that stuff that just plagues your head when you're a dancer, but especially when you're a dancer suffering depression. Um, and then this weird voice out of nowhere just like exploded into my head and she was so confident and assured and she's just gone, why bother? Because you love it. This, as if you want to be doing anything else. Just go out on stage and effing have fun with it. And I did. I was just like, man, yeah, I don't care. It was like I didn't care about the places and went out on stage had fun, I entertained the audience, and I came first. Wasn't able to replicate it again the next day when I went on stage, but that moment, that was just... Awesome. Favourite dance step? Um, I'm not particularly great at this step because it's an allegro, but I love Padasha. I love it. What dance style am I best at? Um, I'd probably musical. It's not always my favourite, but I think that's what my strength is. And what steps am I best at? Um, oh, can you see this neck? Mm. Um, Porta bra. Anything that uses the upper body, and that's probably why. Musical theatre. The show girly arms sort of thing. I got long arms and a long neck. What do you eat before a performance? Oh, I wish I had some fabulous answer to this that was going to be all filled with nutritious information. Uh, but I'm really naughty. I can't eat before a performance. My stomach gets all tied in knots. Um, and I actually know a lot of performers, dancers in particular, who are the same. And then once I started doing singing as well, it just, it, you can't have anything dairy based. And it just, so I don't eat before a performance, but after a performance, Um, my most dreaded dance step, um, or oh, anything super flexible, anything with a leg. Oh, not my hips are sore just thinking. Uh, most memorable performance I've judged or seen at a comp. Um, 
Yeah, so if you're doing, if you want to answer these questions and put them in the comments or share them with me on social media, go for it. With this one, it doesn't have to be something you've judged. Obviously, if you're not a judge, it's something you've seen, the most memorable performance you've seen at a comp. Um, so for me, I often say in my adjudications that the places don't mean that you haven't affected me. So people think if first place is the one that I like the best, it's not necessarily like that. First place is the one that ticked all the boxes. But this one that was the that really resonated the most with me, this didn't get first place. I think it actually only got third, which is still good. But, um, and it was Hype Dance Studios in Mount Gambier in Australia. That was their open age contemporary at the Mount Gambier Stedford. But this routine was just, it struck a chord with me because your job as dancers is to communicate to the audience. Um, and you have to communicate whatever the choreographer's vision is. And this group did that so beautifully. Um, they communicated to me really, really well. Um, the piece was about a woman dying of cancer and it was done with absolutely beautiful integrity and um, sensitivity. You sometimes see people do an issue and it's kind of just throw a leg, do some this and it's not really they're not really they're not really good in it and it's a little bit insensitive um, this wasn't this was beautiful um, I'd experienced this issue with my mum my mum passed away of cancer in 2010 and sometimes these cancer issues they don't resonate well with me um, because I find it's like it's almost as if they're just using the issue to tug at the heartstrings or whatever. This one was amazing. It was beautiful. It was done so well and I could tell someone behind this had been through it and that they were using the art of dance to pay tribute to this woman that they'd lost. Um, and it was, when I teared up, it was not sad. It was cathartic. It was... It was beautiful. Um, yeah, so even though they only came third, it was still, on a personal level, it was definitely the most powerful piece I've seen at a comp. I learnt Chiquetti Ballet for pretty much all of my ballet training and didn't do syllabus much with my jazz or tap or any other stuff like that, so it was just Who was your biggest support encouragement as a dancer? I'm pretty sure most people will have the same answer on this. Most, not all, but my own, definitely. She's the best dance mom ever. So good. Why do you love dance? Because I have no choice. Just in me. I love communicating, um, and dance is communicating on, in so many ways. You use your music, you use the your body language, you use your costumes, you use your facial expressions, there's just so many ways of communicating um, all at once and I love communicating. And the final one, what do I want to do in the future with dance? Uh, I want to adjudicate more, I'd love to adjudicate overseas. Um, I want to see Dance Geek grow online um, and in the real world, so in studio workshops maybe, maybe even like a Love to do like a festival or a um, convention type thing. Get more fit so that I can actually dance myself. I'd love to do like an adult ballet class or something like that, um, and just dance for fun, not for working towards a career or a comp. Um, but mostly, yeah, focusing on dance geek and just sharing my obsession with dance with the whole world. Um, so hopefully, you will be seeing more of me in the next year in my 37th year on this earth um, and if you want to see more from me hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the bell otherwise the subscribe button doesn't mean anything because YouTube is weird like that um, the bell will send you a notification um, just to let you know when I'm uploading I upload every Friday that's Friday Australian time um, but I'm gonna start maybe throwing in a few extra videos here and there but definitely every Friday Thank you for sharing this birthday video with me. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and answer the questions. Um, put it in the comments or send them, email it to me or put it on one of my social media things.
longer ever. Um, I'd like to hear about your 37 dance facts. Thanks for watching. See you later.